This is the video for Module 14, Section 4.4, about systems of linear equations and problem solving. In the last three sections, we've looked at how to solve systems of equations. Now we're going to look at how to use systems of equations to solve problems. Here are the steps that we need to go through in order to solve problems using systems of equations. Step one, understand the problem. In order to do this, you need to read and reread the problem. Then choose variables to represent the unknown quantities. It's also very helpful to construct a drawing or use a table to organize the information. Step two is to translate the problem into two equations. Step three is to solve the system of equations. Step four is to interpret the results. One part of step four is to check the solution in the original problem. And then you need to state your conclusion in words. The first type of problems that we're going to talk about is price and money problems. So here's an example. Alicia purchased tickets to a local comedy club for five adults and two children. The total cost was $161. The cost of a child's ticket was $7 less than the cost of an adult's ticket. Find the price of an adult's ticket and of a child's ticket. So our first step is to understand the problem. We already read the problem. Reread it if you need to. The second part of step one is to assign variables for the unknown quantities. And one of the things that usually works best for this is to look at what quantities the problem is asking you to find and assign those as your variables. So in this problem, we're being asked to find the price of an adult's ticket and of a child's ticket. So let's assign two variables for those two quantities. We can make the price of an adult's ticket x and the price of a child's ticket y. Now the next part of step one in understanding the problem was to use either a drawing or a table to understand and organize the information. For price and money problems it's helpful to use a table. To use a table for this type of problem we want to start out by using one row for each of the different types of tickets. So we'll have one row that has to do with the adults' tickets and one row that has to do with the children's tickets. And then we should use another row for any totals. For what goes into our columns, we want to have one column for the number of tickets one column for the price of a ticket, and we want to have a third column for the total cost. And this is actually going to be the first two columns multiplied together. So it's going to be the number of tickets times the price. So let's see what we can fill in in this table. We already set up our variables so that x is the price of an adult's ticket and y is the price of a child's ticket. So we could fill in our price column with x for the adults and y for the children. And then for our numbers of tickets, if we go back to our problem, Alicia had purchased five adult tickets and two children's tickets. So we could fill those two in. And then our total cost we're just multiplying the number of tickets times the price. So the total cost for the adult tickets would be 5 times x. Total cost for the children's tickets would be 2 times y. Now we can also fill in our total rows. We know that our total number of tickets is 7. The price of a ticket, we can't really do a total for that because we have two different prices for the two different types of tickets. But for the total cost, we can do a total here just by adding up the cells above it. 
So our total cost would be 5x plus 2y. So now we've organized our information. Our step two is to write two equations from this information. Down here where we have our total cost is 5x plus 2y, we have some more information in the problem about the total cost because it told us that the total cost was $161. So this is also equal to $161, and that already gives us one equation. Now, if we don't see how to get a second equation, then we should go back to the problem and see if there's any other information there that we haven't used yet. And there is, because it tells us in the problem that the cost of a child's ticket was $7 less than the cost of an adult's ticket. And since we set our variables to be the price of a child's ticket and the price of an adult ticket, we know the price of the child's ticket would be y, the price of the adult ticket would be x, so we could write an equation just by translating this sentence. So that would mean that we would have y, the cost of the child's ticket, would be equal to $7 less than x. And this is one of those times when you have to reverse the order of the two values when you translate. So we'd have another equation that would be y is equal to x minus 7. So that gives us a system of equations, and we're going to solve that. And because of the way we have it written already, we have the second equation solved for y, so this would be an easy one to use the substitution method with. There would be nothing wrong with using the addition method here. It's just that it's already nicely set up to use the substitution method. So remember with the substitution method, we solve one of the equations for one of the variables, which we already have. Then we substitute our expression into the other equation. So here, in place of the y in our first equation, we're going to substitute our expression x minus 7. Now we have an equation that only has x in it, and we can solve for x. So we're going to distribute the 2. Then we can combine our like terms here. So we have 7x minus 14 is equal to 161. Then if we add 14 to both sides, that would give us 175 on the right side. To solve for x, we need to divide both sides by 7 and that would give us x is equal to 25. The other step in our substitution method is to take the value that we got here and substitute it back into one of the equations in order to solve for the other variable. And to do this, we're going to use this equation right here because it was already solved for y. That means that all we have to do is substitute 25 in for x. So we end up with y is equal to 18. So this gives us a possible solution. If we look at it as an ordered pair, this would be the ordered pair 25, 18. We want to check our solution in the problem. So if we look back at our original problem, we can check our solution by making sure that it makes sense with what we were told. So if Felicia had purchased tickets for five adults, and if the price of an adult ticket was $25, and for two children at a price of $18, let's just total that up and make sure that that adds up to $161. So five adults at $25 each would give us a total of $125 if we multiply those. Two children at $18 a piece would give us a total of $36. If we add those two, we get $161. So that part checks. The other part we would need to check is that the relationship 
is the same as what it gave us in the problem. So the cost of a child's ticket should be $7 less than the cost of an adult's ticket. So the cost of a child's ticket $18, which is $7 less than our adult ticket, which was $25. So that part also checks. So finally, we're going to write out our solution. We need to answer the question of what was the price of an adult's ticket and of a child's ticket. So the price of an adult's ticket was $25 and the price of a child's ticket was $18. All right, let's do another example. In this one, Allison throws loose change found in the laundry into a container. After one month, she finds it contains all nickels and dimes. In fact, there are four times as many dimes as nickels and the value of the dimes is $3.50 more than the value of the nickels. How many nickels and dimes does Allison have? So once again, we've read the problem. Now let's look at what the problem is actually asking us to find and see if we can let those quantities be our variables. So what we're trying to find here is the number of nickels and dimes that she has. So let's just let one of these be x and one of them be y. So let's say that x is the number of nickels and that y is the number of dimes. Now in this one again we're going to use a table we're going to use nickels for one row of our table and dimes for another row and then we'll have a third row for totals and this is going to work a lot like the last problem that we did where we'll have one column that will be our number of coins either dimes or nickels another column for the value of one of the coins. So either the value of a nickel or the value of a dime. And our third column will be again the first two columns multiplied together which will give us the total value of the coin. Let's see what we can fill in in this table. We know our number of nickels is X, our number of dimes is Y. We could fill in the total for the number of coins just by adding those two together. So our total for the number of coins we could say would be x plus y. Now for the value column, the value of one nickel, if we put this in dollars, would be 0 0.05. The value of one dime in dollars would be 0.10. And again here we can't really fill in a total for this row because that wouldn't make any sense. So we're not going to fill in that cell right there. Now for our total value we're just going to be multiplying the two cells to get our total value. So for this one we'd have x times 0 0.05. We could write that as 0 0.05x. For the next one we'd have y times 0.10. So we could write that as 0.10y. And our total value for this one, we can add those two together. So our total value would be 0.05x plus 0.10y. All right, so we've got everything filled in the table that we can. Now we want to write our equations. OK, so to write our two equations, let's look back at the problem and see if we have anything that can help us. 
There's nothing in the problem that tells us what the total value of all the coins is, so we can't use that. But we do have two different things in the problem that we haven't used yet. One of them is that there are four times as many dimes as nickels. So there's a comparison between the number of dimes and the number of nickels. And we also know that the value of the dimes is $3.50 more than the value of the nickels. So there are two different relationships that we can use to write equations. So let's start with the four times as many dimes as nickels. So if we translated that, that would mean that the number of dimes, which is y, is, which translates to an equals, four times the number of nickels. So that would four, be four times the number of nickels, which was x. So that gives us y equals 4x as one of our equations. Now we have the other phrase that we can translate, which says that the value of the dimes is 350 more than the value of the nickels. Now that one we can also translate, since we don't have just one variable to stand for the value of dimes and the value of the nickels, we'll have to use something from our table. So what we're talking about here is the total value. So this cell from our table here would count as the value of the dimes. And this expression here would count as the value of the nickels. So if we're translating our statement into an equation, then the value of the dimes, we know that's 0 0.10 times y, is, that translates to an equal sign, 350 more than the value of the nickels. So the value of our nickels is 0 0.05 times x. 350 more than that would be that plus 350. So there's our second equation. So we'll take these two and this gives us a system of equations. And again, since we already have this first one that's solved for y, this would be a great time to use our substitution method. Now you can also do this one using the addition method. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that the substitution method is already sort of set up for us, so it's an easy one to use here. So we're going to take this expression for y and plug it into our second equation in place of the y. So in the second equation where we have a y here, we're going to replace that with a 4x. And now we've got all x's in here, so we can solve this for x. So let's multiply this out first. That gives us 0.40x is equal to 0.05x plus 350. Let's multiply through by 100 to clear out our decimals. And when we're doing this, we have to remember to do it on each side. And on the right side here, we have to multiply the 100 times each different term that we have. So this gives us on the left side 40x. On the right side, it gives us 5x plus 350. Now we can solve this by subtracting 5x from both sides. That gives us 35x on the left side and 350 on the right side. Then if we divide both sides by 35, that's going to give us x is equal to 10. OK, now let's go up here and finish this. We know that we have x is equal to 10. Now we need to go back to one of our two equations and plug that value in in order to get the y value. We're going to substitute it in to this equation since that's the easiest place to do it. So y is going to equal 4 times 10, which is 40. So our ordered pair solution now would be 10, 40. And again, the way we set this up was that the x was the number of nickels and the y was the number of dimes. So that would mean here that we would have 10 nickels 
and 40 dimes. So let's see if that makes sense in our problem. So to check this, what we can do is check the two statements that we translated. So the first one said that there were four times as many dimes as nickels. So if we have 40 dimes and 10 nickels, then yes, this would be true. Our second statement said that the value of the dimes was $3.50 more than the value of the nickels. That one's going to take a little bit more to check. So first, if we figure out the value of our dimes, if we have 40 dimes, that's going to give us in dollars 40 times 10 cents, since each dime is worth 10 cents, that would be $4. Now if we have 10 nickels, the value of that would be 10 times each nickel is 5 cents, so 10 times 0 0.05, which would be 50 cents. So the value of our dimes is $4, and that's $3.50 more than the value of the nickels. So that checks. So our solution, and remember we want to answer the question that the problem was asking, which was how many nickels and dimes does Allison have? Allison has 10 nickels and 40 dimes. Okay, a different kind of problem that we can do using systems of equations is called a mixture problem. There's some different types of mixture problems. One of them is where we have a solution. In this problem, we have a solution of sodium hydroxide, which means that we have sodium hydroxide mixed up with something else like water. And when we say we have a 35% solution, that means that 35% of the total amount of the solution is actually sodium hydroxide. So in this one, Amy has a 35% solution of sodium hydroxide in one container, and then a 21% solution in another container. And the question is, what amounts of each solution should she mix in order to end up with seven liters of 27% solution? So these kind of problems work a lot like the price and money problems that we've just been doing. And that is that first we want to read the problem, understand what the problem is asking us. And then we want to look at what the problem is asking us to find. If possible, assign our variables for those quantities. What our problem is asking here is which what amounts of each different solution she should mix together. So the two solutions we're talking about here are the 35% solution and the 21% solution. So let's just make those X and Y. So let's say X is the amount, and our amount here, since our final amount is in liters, then this is going to be in liters also. So the amount in liters of our 35% solution, and then let's say Y is the amount in liters of our 21% solution. That way when we get to the end of the problem and we've solved for x and y, we automatically have our answers to the problem. So now here again we're going to use a table and this time we're going to use the rows of the table for the different types of solutions. So let's make this first row have to do with our 35% solution. And let's make the second row our 21% solution. And for the third row, we're going to have our resulting solution. So if we're mixing these two, and what we want to come up with is a 27% solution. So our third row here is going to be our mixture, which is going to be our 27% solution. Now for the columns, Let's make the first column the amount, and again this is going to be in liters, of solution. 
And our second column is going to be the concentration of our solution. So for example, this first one is going to be 35%, and we're going to write that in decimal form instead of percent form. So the concentration here is going to be 0.35. That's how much, that's again how much of the solution is actually the sodium hydroxide. So we can go ahead and fill out these really easily just by converting our percents to decimals. So our second one would be 0.21 and our last one would be 0.27. Our last column again is going to be these first two multiplied together. So this is going to be amount times concentration and what that gives us is the amount of actual sodium hydroxide. Okay so let's see what we can fill in here. Our amounts, we've got x for our amount of the 35 percent and y for our amount of the 21 percent solution. For our 27 percent solution we know we're mixing these two amounts in other words we're adding them together so our total amount that we're going to have of the 27 percent solution is x plus y then for our third column over here again we're just multiplying the first two columns together so this first one would be 0.35 times x then we have 0.21 times y in this first column when we did the x plus y for the total there's something else we know from the problem that we can go ahead and put in here and that is that we want to end up with 7 liters of our 27 percent solution. We also know that what's in this cell should add up to 7. So there we already have one of our two equations. So now when we're multiplying our two columns together we could use the x plus y here but since we know the actual number here it'd be easier to use that. So we'd have here 7 times 0.27. Now what this does is it gives us a way to get one more equation and that is that, that if we add these two cells they should add up to this. So that gives us a second equation. So let's write our two equations now. We already had one of them. We know that we have x of one solution and y of another solution. If we add those we get 7 liters. And our second equation comes from adding in that last column. So we're taking the 0.35x plus the 0.21y. That has to add up to the same thing that's in the bottom right cell of our table and that is the 7 times the 0.27. So that gives us another equation that we can solve. So our system now is these two equations and just to make this a little bit easier let's go ahead with the second equation and multiply through by 100 to clear out the decimals. So that's going to give us 0.35x plus 21y is equal to 7 times 27. So we just took each term and multiplied by 100. And what we see if we do that, notice in this equation each different term is a multiple of 7. So we could actually divide a 7 out of here. And again that's going to make our problem a little bit easier. So if we divide everything by 7 that's going to give us 5x plus 3y and notice here that's why I didn't go ahead and multiply these two because if we divide this by 7 then we just have 27. Now you wouldn't have to do that but that's a little bit of a shortcut that will make this problem easier to work through. So now our two equations look like this. x plus y is equal to 7 and 5x plus 3y is equal to 27. So this problem we could use either the addition method or the substitution method. Since we used the substitution method on the previous two examples, let's use the addition method here. So to do that, we need to get either our x's or our y's to cancel. So we could get the y's to cancel if we multiplied our first equation by negative 3. So that would give us negative 3x minus 3y. And remember to multiply on both sides, so on the right side we would have negative 21. This is our new first equation. And then our second equation still is 5x plus 
3y is equal to 27. So now we can just add these two together. Negative 3x plus 5x would give us 2x. Negative 3y and plus 3y cancel each other out. And then negative 21 plus 27 would give us a positive 6. So that gives us 2x is equal to 6. If we divide both sides of that by 2, we're going to get x is equal to 3. So let's take this up here now. If we have x is equal to 3, then we can go back to either one of our two equations and substitute that value in. So let's substitute in our first equation since it was a little bit simpler. So we're substituting 3 for the x. And then if we subtract 3 from both sides, that's going to give us y is equal to 4. So if we're thinking in ordered pairs here, our ordered pair solution would be 3, 4. And in terms of our problem, that means that we would have 3 liters of the 35% solution and 4 liters of the 21% solution. So let's check this with our problem. We need a total of 7 liters when we mix the two solutions together. Well, if we have 3 liters plus 4 liters, that's going to give us 7 liters. So that one checks. The only other thing we can check is our concentration. So let's look at our third column here where we had our concentrations. So our total amount of sodium hydroxide from the first solution we had 35% solution and we have 3 liters of that. So it's 0.35 times 3. And if we multiply that, that's going to give us 1.05 liters. From our 21% solution, we have 0.21 times 4. If we multiply that, that gives us 0.84 liters. So if we add those two together, That gives us 1.89 liters. So 1.89 liters out of our 7 liters is sodium hydroxide. So if we want to check the concentration, we take 1.89 and divide by our total amount of solution, which is 7 liters. And that gives us our concentration. Well, if we divide 1.89 by 7, we end up with 0.27. So that checks because we wanted to get a 27% solution. So our solution to the problem written out would be or that she should mix three liters of 35% solution and four liters of the 21% solution. Okay, let's do another kind of mixture problem. In this one we don't have chemical solutions but we have we have different types of we have different types of foods instead of the concentrations we have the price per pound. So in this one we have a shop manager who's mixing M&Ms which are worth $2 a pound with trail mix which is worth $1.50 per pound. We want to find out how many pounds of each she should mix to get 50 pounds of a party mix worth $1.80 per pound. So again, we're going to start by assigning variables, and the two quantities we're trying to find are how many pounds of each item. 
So how many pounds of M&Ms and how many pounds of trail mix? So let's let X equal the number of pounds of M&Ms. And let's let Y equal the number of pounds of trail mix. Okay, so again we're using a table. We're going to have one row for the M&Ms, one row for the trail mix, and a third row for the mixture. Or in other words, the party mix that we're trying to get. So our first column here is going to be the number of pounds. Second column is going to be price per pound. And the third column again is going to be these two multiplied together, which is going to give us the total value of that item. So this is going to be the number of pounds times the price per pound. All right, so we can fill in our number of pounds column. We know we have X pounds of M&Ms, Y pounds of trail mix, and our mixture, again, we can add these two together and get X plus Y. We also know from our problem that we want to get a total of 50 pounds. So we want the X plus Y to equal 50. So we already have one equation written. Now our prices per pound, the M&Ms were $2, trail mix was $1.50. Now for our price per pound for the mixture, we know what we want that to be. We want it to be worth $1.80 per pound. So we can go ahead and put that in here too. Now for our total values, all we're doing is multiplying the first two columns together. So for this one, we'd have $2 times X. For the second row, we'd have $1.50 times Y. And for the third row, again, we could use the X plus Y, but since we have a number here, it's much easier to use that. So here we'd have 50 times $1.80. So for our two equations, we already have that X plus Y is equal to 50. And then for our second equation, again, we can add these two together to get what's in this cell. So that's going to mean we have $2 times X plus $1.50 times Y is equal to what we've got in that third row in that column, which is 50 times $1.80. And let's go ahead and multiply this through by 10. to get rid of our decimals. So that's going to give us 20x plus 15y is equal to 50 times 18. Okay, so our system now looks like this. x plus y is equal to 50 and 20x plus 15y is equal to 50 times 18, which is 900. So again here we could use substitution or we could use addition. It doesn't really matter which one we use. Let's try using addition on this one. So to get our x's or our y's to cancel, we'd have to multiply this first equation by something. Let's multiply our first equation by negative 20 so that our x's will cancel out. So that gives us negative 20x minus 20y is equal to 50 times negative 20 which would be negative 1,000. That's our new first equation. Our second equation doesn't need to change. So now if we add these two together, the x's cancel out. For the y's, we have negative 20y plus 15y is negative 5y. 
and then we have negative 1,000 plus 900 would, get, would give us negative 100. If we divide both sides of this by negative 5, that's going to give us y is equal to 20. Now we need to solve for the x. So we have y is equal to 20. Let's substitute that in our original first equation since that was an easy one. So we're substituting 20 in for the y. And then if we subtract 20 from both sides, we have x is equal to 30. So our ordered pair solution would be 30 for the x and 20 for the y. In terms of our problem, this would mean that we would have 30 pounds of M&Ms and 20 pounds of trail mix. So let's see if the, this makes sense in our problem. We have 30 pounds of M&Ms plus 20 pounds of trail mix. If we add those together, that gives us 50 pounds altogether, which was what we wanted up here. So that checks. And then our total value, we have 30 pounds of M&Ms times $2 per pound. That would have a total cost of 30 times 2, which would be $60. Then for our trail mix, we'd have 20 pounds times $1.50 per pound, 20 times $1.50 would give us $30. So our total value for those two put together, if we add these two, would be ninety dollars. If our total value is ninety dollars and we've got fifty pounds, then to get our price per pound, we take our ninety dollars and divide by our fifty pounds. And I need to divide by 50 is going to give us 1.8. So this would be $1.80 per pound. And that was what we wanted it to be. So that checks. So our solution is that she should use 30 pounds of M&Ms and 20 pounds of trail mix. Okay, finally, we can also use systems of equations to solve motion problems. We talked about motion problems in a previous module. We were only using single equations to solve the problems. In this one, we're going to do it using systems of equations. So that means we want to have two variables and two equations. And remember with motion problems, the basic formula that we used was that distance equals rate times time. Or D is equal to RT. So in this problem, we have that Kyle and Jason live 28 miles apart. They decide to bicycle towards each other and meet somewhere in between. Kyle's rate of speed is 40% of Jason's. They start out at the same time and meet two hours later. Find Kyle's and Jason's rates of speed. So let's draw a picture of this. So let's put in Kyle's house over here and Jason's house over here. And we know from the problem that that 
distance is 28 miles altogether. And they're going to meet somewhere in between the two. So here again, what we want to find is both Kyle's and Jason's rates of speed. So let's use our variables for those. Let's just say that x is Kyle's rate. and that y is Jason's rate of speed. And again, we can use a table for this. We, we did this before when we talked about motion problems. So let's have one row for Kyle and one, one row for Jason. And then we can do our columns as distance rate and time. So we can already fill in our rates. We know Kyle's rate we're calling x and Jason's rate we're calling it y. And we know the times because they start out at the same time and we know that they meet two hours later. So each of them is bicycling for two hours. Now for the distances we can fill in these by using our formula up here. We know that distance is equal to rate times time. So the distance here would be Kyle's rate times his time. So we know that would be 2x. And Jason's distance would be 2y. And we act, can actually do another row here to help us because we know that our total distance, if we add the distances of the two of them, since they're starting out 28 miles apart and meeting in the middle, we know our total distance is going to be 28 miles. So that actually already gives us one equation, and that is that, so if we go to write our two equations, we already have one, and that is that 2x plus 2y is equal to 28. Now to get another equation, let's go back to the problem and see if there's any other information that we haven't used yet. Well, there is, and that's this sentence right here where it says that Kyle's rate of speed is 40% of Jason's. So let's translate that using the variables that we have. Kyle's rate of speed was x. The is here is going to translate to an equal sign. And then we have 40% of, and of is a signal for multiplication. And Jason's speed is y. So if we translate that, we have x is equal to 40%. We can put that as a decimal by moving the decimal point over two places. So that would be 0.40 times y. So there's a second equation for us. In this one, since we have the second equation already solved for x, this would be a great one to use substitution for. So we're going to take this expression and substitute it into our first equation. So in place of the x, we're going to substitute 0.40y. And now we just have y's in our equation. So if we multiply this out, we get 0.80y plus 2y is equal to 28. So we can add the 2 and the 0.80, that gives us 2.80 or just 2.8y is equal to 28. Then if we divide both sides by the 2.8, we're going to end up with y is equal to 10. Now if we take our value for y and substitute it into our second equation right here, we have x is equal to 0.40 times 10. And that gives us that x is equal to 4. Okay, so our ordered pair solution now looks like this, 4 and 10, which would mean that Kyle's rate of speed would be 4 miles per hour and Jason's rate of speed would be 10 miles per hour. Let's check that and make sure that it works with what we were given in the problem. So first let's check that Kyle's rate of speed is 40% of Jason's. So Kyle's rate is 
40% of Jason's. We want to check and make sure that's true. Well, if Kyle's rate is 4, that would mean that 4 would have to be 40% of Jason's rate, which is 10. Is that true? Yes, it is. So that one checks. Then the other thing we need to check is that if they both bicycle for two hours, that they actually together cover 28 miles. So let's see what their distances are. So Kyle's distance that he actually travels, and we can go back to our table here, Kyle's distance would be 2 times x. That would be 2 times 4, which would be 8 miles. Jason's distance would be 2 times y, or 2 times 10, which would be 20 miles. And if we add those two together, we get 28 miles. So that checks because they, were, they live 28 miles apart. So our solution, written out in words, is that Kyle's rate is 4 miles per hour and that Jason's rate is 10 miles per hour.